Lovely. So welcome everyone who's just joined. Um, we'll just wait a couple of minutes for everyone to join. Grab yourselves a drink and ensure you're sitting comfortably. Um, we will kick things off shortly. But to start, um, I'd just like to up, get our poll working. Cool, so here is a poll. How important is it to you or your organisation to hire diverse talent in 2021? We'll just, before we start, we will just uh, complete the poll. So welcome to anyone that's just joined. We will just wait um, a couple of minutes for everyone else to join. So I hope that you're all sitting comfortably. Amazing. So share those poll results before we start. And 100% said it is important, which is amazing. <laughs> um, so good morning, afternoon or evening, folks, depending on where you are throughout the world. Welcome to our seventh webinar in a series of global Women in DevOps live panel discussions. Today's webinar is titled Black History Month, Diversity in DevOps, and today we have teamed up with the incredible Coding Black Females group. In light of recent events throughout the world, such as the tragic death of George Floyd, many of us know the fight for equality is ongoing and the devastating event on May the 20th was not an isolated one. However, it's time that we can all make positive change throughout the world, um, in society and in the workplace. With that in mind, in a recent study by a CIO report, of the 25% of women working in tech, Asian women make up just 5%, um, while Black and Hispanic women accounted for 3% and 1% respectively. So tonight is an opportunity to amplify influential Black voices in technology, to discuss experiences, strategies and celebrate achievements. You can expect an hour of a panel discussion with a live Q&A throughout and half an hour of networking for those that wish to continue the conversation further. I'm Lucy Neal and I'm the co-founder and marketing manager of Women in DevOps. I'll be passing the microphone over to Siobhan Baker from Coding Black Females shortly. But before, I'd just like to welcome Ari Waller, one of our platinum sponsors from JFrog, to, give, um, to go over the prize giveaway. So just over to you, Ari. Thank you so much, Lucy. I really appreciate it. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Hope everybody can see that okay. Thumbs up, Lucy, if we're, we're good? Yep. Excellent. <laughs> well, hi, everybody. Uh, I am Ari Waller, and I'm the Meetup Event Manager for JFrog, and we are so proud to be a platinum sponsor for Women in DevOps. Uh, JFrog is a DevOps software company based in the Silicon Valley um, that was founded in 2008 even before the world used the term DevOps. Uh, we are known by many for our flagship product, Artifactory, which is the world's leading binary repository. And today we have 600 employees, actually more than that now, 10 offices globally, and more than 3 million developers use our tools daily. Um, we have a very exciting event coming up that we wanted to share uh, with the community, especially if you are in the financial services industry or if you're looking um, to get into the financial services industry because uh, JFrog is powering an exclusive single day financials DevOps summit with some pretty big industry names, including the CIO of Bank of America, uh, this, the uh, chief information security officer from the New York Stock Exchange. Um, and also a VP of engineering from American Express. So if you're in the industry, that's uh, definitely a great place to be. And I'll, it's gonna be on November 3rd, EMEA time, and I'm going to drop it in the uh, chat shortly so you have a link to see that. But in celebration of really the amazing panel discussion, I know we're all looking forward to today, JFrog is gonna be giving away a Nintendo Switch Lite to a lucky winner. 
you can enter with the QR code that you could see there or the bit.ly link that you see. And I'm also gonna drop that link in the chat as well for you to enter. Um, and a winner is gonna be selected within two business days. And then we're gonna share the winner with the women in DevOps community and on social media. I'm not sure if you saw our happy winner last month, but uh, I thought the picture was gonna go viral uh, with the uh, level of happiness we saw there with uh, the Nintendo Switch in hand. So that could be you. Um, but without any further ado, to get started with our panel, I'm going to turn it right back over to you, Lucy. Perfect. Cheers for that, Ari. And best of luck, folks. Um, it's a pretty spectacular prize. Um, so yeah, thanks again, Ari. Um, so for those that are new to our community, Women in DevOps is a women empowerment platform and networking initiative devoted to empowering people in the DevOps industry by improving the gender imbalance and striving to promote equality in technology. We host a variety of meaningful and empowering webinars, events and workshops, acknowledging that even though the DevOps industry is progressive, there is more work to be done to achieve a truly inclusive workforce. Our unique platform has become a global movement and is used to not only amplify the voices of women, but the DevOps community as a whole, um, to break down the barriers and drive positive change throughout the world. I'll now pass over to you, Siobhan, to introduce Coding Black Females and begin the panel discussion. So thank you. Thanks, Lucy. Um, to introduce Coding Black Females, who are really excited to partner, collaborate with Women in DevOps on this event this evening. Um, to tell you a little bit more about us, uh, Coding Black Females is a non-profit organisation. We started in 2017, uh, was started by our founder, Charlene Hunter, um, and it was really around providing a space for black female developers to meet together with one another. Um, we've grown a lot since 2017 to now have a community of over 1,200 members um, and a social media reach of over 10,000 um, followers. And we host events twice a month, um, which typically were in-person meetups, but have switched to virtual events now, um, really around providing opportunities to learn, to network with other uh, black women in tech, um, and to continue to further professional growth. Um, we are here for individuals who may never have touched a line of code or might not be in the tech industry yet, but they're aspiring to be through to those who have been working in the tech industry for a number of years and are quite advanced in their career. Um, and it's really uh, about bringing those uh, individuals together in, in one space. Um, we do have a few activities that go on as well as our um, bi-weekly meetups. Um, so currently we have a bootcamp program called Black Code Her. Uh, which is running for 50 women um, in the Midlands to be trained and become uh, full stack developers. And we also have our Visible in Tech campaign, which is uh, a campaign to showcase all of the different black women working in tech, um, all the different roles that they might be doing and really make them much more visible. And you can have a look at our website, which is codingblackfemales.com and uh, where you can find out more about those um, different activities. In terms of my role, I am part of the leadership team and I look at community and relationships. So looking at our community members, their needs, their interests, um, and trying to align those with the partnerships that we explore um, with companies who might uh, want to support, um, employ, uh, train and develop women in our community. Um, really excited about the event this evening. Uh, we've got an, an amazing lineup of speakers. Um, I had an opportunity to hear a little bit about each of them um, and looking forward to uh, delving a little bit deeper into each of their journeys and experiences. Um, so we have, as Lucy mentioned, the next hour up till about seven o'clock for our uh, panel event. You can share any questions that you might have in the Q&A section. We do have a dedicated 10 minutes, um, so from 6.50, uh, if you're, well, from 10 to the hour, depending on where, where you're dialing in from, uh, for those questions. And if we can take any live, we will try to do that as well. Um, and do stay online at the end of the session because there is a networking session happening afterwards, which Lucy will tell you a bit more about. So we will kick off our panel. Um, 
it's really exciting to be able to come together to discuss topics around diversity and DevOps and generally within the tech industry. Um, I will let each of the panelists introduce themselves. Uh, I'll be chairing and just to tell you a little bit more about my role, I am a senior software engineer within a software development consultancy and I've been in tech for about two years and only wrote my first line of code about three to four years ago. Um, and I will throw it over to our panellists and ask them to tell us about themselves, uh, their role and their individual journeys. Uh, if I go to Sola first. Thank you so much, Shaban. Um, hi, everyone. Um, yeah, my name is Bim Sola Ojo. Um, you can call me Sola. And um, I'm a Cloud DevOps engineer in Accenture UK. Um, I got into tech, you know, um, through the graduate program in Accenture. So I have a master's, I have a bachelor's and master's degree in mechanical engineering. And um, my journey into tech has been as a result of my passion for technology. So I was lucky to get the role with Accenture and I've um, basically been learning on the job and, you know, training myself as I go along and basically just, um, you know, learning tech, you know, by doing hands-on tech projects. So I'm a, I'm a core um, cloud DevOps engineer and um, uh, I chose DevOps because I wanted an area that was very hands-on and an area that, you know, you, you're able to build very rare and valuable skills that, you, you know, um, are very futuristic. Um, DevOps is the future of software delivery. So I, I really do enjoy my work as a DevOps engineer. Thank you so much. And then uh, Rihanna. Thank you. First of all, thank you for inviting me for this panel. About me, well, uh, I describe myself as a passionate software engineer, uh, handcrafter, and a community geek. Uh, I work uh, full time as a software engineer for the United Nations College Board Program currently, uh, and uh, most of my time goes for the uh, tech community works. Uh, I am leader of Google Developers Group in Rome. Uh, I'm a Women Technical Ambassador and the Google Developer Expert in Web, Flutter, and uh, Dart uh, technologies. Uh, I love uh, mentoring and I'm part also um, of uh, volunteers of different organizations like Coder Future and uh, Coder Dojo. Uh, how I get in tech, uh, actually it's more, it's more for curiosity um and uh, uh prior to the of start of my uh, starting my career in tech uh, i was working as an accountant and as a fashion designer so my journey for tech was longer <laughs> and not uh, not and uh, not traditional um i always wanted to uh, know more about computers and that was my curiosity i grew up in ethiopia where uh, i had a really limited com uh, computer access and uh, internet access back in my high school time uh, and as I finished uh, I uh, wanted to start uh, right away my uh, my bachelor in computer science but I could not go to the university since I had an Italian diploma and uh, in Ethiopia back then it was not accepted so I started my accounting uh, job and uh, then uh, I realized that was not for me so I started to pursue my um, my bachelor for for computer science and I reached uh, to Italy and uh, started my bachelor 10 years ago now so <laughs> I can say I'm in tech for 10 years now <laughs> and um, yeah that's my journey to take to get into into tech thank you thank you thanks for sharing and we've also got Rianne Hi everyone, um, my name is Rian, um, as Shivon just said, thank you for having me tonight. Um, so again, similar to Rihanna, my path into tech was not the traditional route. Um, at university I studied music technology, um, so my realm and knowledge of technology at that point was very different to what it is now. If you mentioned DevOps back then I'd be like, don't know what you're talking about. Um, uh, so moving on from there, I had a job at Carphone Warehouse, which also opened my eyes up to sort of the hardware appreciation side of things. So I believe at like 11 years old is when I built my first computer. So things sort of kicked off from there. 
um, I guess it was more of a curiosity thing that I had, just wanting to know how things worked. Um, so a few years on, um, which was last year, I completed the AWS Restart program, which is 12 weeks long. Um, we covered a range of things like networking, security, Linux, uh, Python, AWS services like CloudFront, um, EC2 instances, S3. Probably sounds a bit foreign for anyone that is, you know, new to this, but um, I would highly recommend doing a lot of research if this is something that you would like to get into. Um, yeah, in short, that is me. Lovely. Thanks to each of you for sharing your journey. Really interesting, different routes in um, and uh, hearing a theme about being curious and following uh, your curiosity that's kind of brought you each to where you are um, at the moment. So to kick off some of our questions and Rihanna, if I can start with you. Um, so we've heard kind of in recent years that some of the larger tech companies no longer require degrees specifically um, to work there. And so it would be really great to hear a bit more about um, your route and your thoughts on how you break into a tech career from a non-traditional background. Um, well, in my opinion, when uh, you come from a non-traditional background, one of the most uh, important thing uh, is to find your own uh, methodology in order to acquire the needed skill set uh, for the tech career that you are aiming for. Uh, and um, after identifying the tech role, because there are a lot of tech roles, so that's that's part also. <laughs> it's um, it's big It's a bit challenging when um, when you want to uh, understand what role you really want or you are interested in or uh, you are excited the most for. Um, one of the uh, things that I think is really helpful, and I think it's what I lacked. Uh, I mean, what I, why I, uh, what I didn't have when I started my journey in tech is uh, finding mentors. Uh, that really help uh, you to figure out, uh, especially if you are a new guy, uh, to have the idea for, uh, uh, for example, uh, from what to start, um, and like for also for the list of courses that you can take or boot camps that you can have, uh, and in general to ha to have like insights of any kind regarding the tech sector that you are interested in. Uh, and for this step, uh, uh, participating in tech communities will help a lot. That's my experience. One of the best moments in my uh, tech career is uh, understanding that there are local communities that I can go and participate and find other um, uh, people that are interested in the same uh, sector that I was interested in and uh, sharing knowledge and understanding from them uh, what are the steps that I have to take in order to uh, to say uh, have a good tech career uh, in general uh, so um, so my suggestion is uh, try to participate as much as you can in, in tech communities in your local or international tech communities uh, and one other thing is like um, I mean browsing in on the internet is really exhausting if you do if you are doing it alone so doing it with someone else would really really help um, and at the same time like looking for uh, internship related uh, to the field that uh, uh, you are studying if you are uh, if you are studying related to the field that you are studying uh, or if they're trying to find a job that are suitable for your uh, skill set will help also to um, to start well uh, uh, career intake uh, and one another thing is like uh, well technology trends and job offerings change often so once you are also in the tech sector it's good that you update yourself uh, and find a way that will facilitate your updates and as I mentioned earlier one of the best uh, methodology my methodology methodology is the participating in the tech communities as an active member uh, and the other thing is like um, what, what I believe it's important not only uh, growing your technical skill in order to have a good career in tech uh, it's also important uh, to improve soft skills uh, so uh, try to improve uh, and try to uh, understand uh, what soft skills are needed in order to have a good career in tech and work on that uh, so more or less these are, these are my suggestions and 
and in some practice are my experiences that helped me to have a tech career that I wanted. That's really great. Thank you. Lots of really good advice in there. Um, uh, lots, lots of, of really good takeaways. And I think uh, you talked a bit about community um, and, you know, being able to meet with others and kind of think about where you're trying to get to um, and working on that together with others that can advise. And I guess my question to Soa um, would love to ask you in terms of mentors kind of within community as well. Um, how do you think mentors can do wonders for your DevOps career? Okay, thanks for that question. Um, I would say that mentors are very important. Like, um, like I said during my introduction, there was no, like I really literally have been learning on the job and it's been because I've also had mentors who have been there before and are there to, you know, guide me and show me the way. Now, the beauty of mentorship is that, you know, it's outside of that formal relationship that you have with your typical line manager who, you know, who is keen about you delivering on the job and who constantly might, might be in a position to always assess you you know it's kind of like a formal relationship but when you have a mentor most times it's informal and you know it just helps you to have someone who has been there on that journey that you want to go on and can advise you on a more casual level so i would say that when one is thinking about mentoring you should as a mentee you should be clear about the areas that you want to be mentored on it shouldn't just be random you know oh yeah i need a mentor and let me just get a mentor you know it's always good to be very clear and i feel like most mentors appreciate when the mentee is proactive and you show your mentor exactly what the outcomes are what you want to get from the mentoring relationship and you know um, mentors definitely are, are those that you know they can show your blind spots as well things that you're cause you're not seeing about yourself you know like like um like um, Rihanna said at the beginning, you know, when she was answering her question, you know, it's important. Tech is not just about your technical skills. Your soft skills are important as well. These are things you can learn from your mentors, you know, and mentoring can come in different ways. You know, you can have a technical mentor. You can have a mentor who is not even related to your field, but can just mentor you on how to perform well at work and how to climb up the career ladder and all those other things that are also very important apart from your core technical skills. So I would say that, you know, definitely mentors are, you know, that they're, 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 they're they're very important to growing a, a career in technology yeah thank you thanks for that um and you touched a bit on uh so mentors being able to look at that technical skill as well as those those soft skills as well and kind of to think about tech technical skills i know that Rianne, you did the aws restart program um, would love it. We've also got a question from the community as well. If you could tell us a bit more about um, your experience on the program um, and also just about your general, uh, like whether you've always had a passion for technology. Sure. Um, thanks for the question. So the course was really intense. Um, it's definitely not for the faint hearted. Um, but of course, if you have like a real enthusiasm and passion for it, I would definitely re recommend going for it. Um, there's so many things to cover um, and there were short tests probably at the end of each week so say on a Thursday or Friday just to sort of analyze where you're at not to say like oh you don't get it so you're bad or anything like that but just for you to sort of gauge where you are at and maybe what gaps you need to fill um, so those things like uh, tests on databases um, Linux commands, uh, networking, and various other things, um, which was really helpful as well. Um, we also tried to make sort of like a little glossary or cheat sheet, just to sort of keep these things in our mind that we will probably need when we do go into our roles. Um, and also looking at uh, some of the technologies and questions that may come up in exams, if we were to choose to go for our exams which I did at the end of the course. I went for the cloud practitioner um, and passed. Um, it was quite different, I would say. Um, although it was multiple choice, sometimes all the answers could be right. So it's trying to choose the best one and actually reading and rereading over the, over the question again, just to make sure you're fully understanding because there's sometimes some things that might trip you up. Um, I would say I always had a passion for tech, but um, because this probably wasn't promoted enough during my time at school, 
I had no idea what this might have opened doors for me. Um, so to now have this um, at 27 years old is, is quite a new experience, but I'm very grateful for it as well. So I'm only seven months into my role as an associate software engineer at News UK. Um, and I've already been thrown into the deep end. Um, I think the best way to learn is to do. Um, it's great having that conceptual knowledge. It's nice to read and, you know, watch people talking about what they've done. But until you try, until you make a few mistakes, um, that's the only way you're going to know what to do and maybe how to use that and build something else or tweak it for something else. Um, so I've been working on some DNS migrations from a traditional data center onto AWS Route 53, which is uh, quite time consuming because uh, we deal with like the sun, the times and a few radio stations. So we have to be pretty careful in our planning um, when we do move these domains across just to make sure it doesn't interfere with anything. Um, and just to touch on the mental thing, um, that was something I knew I wanted even before I sort of had my role. Um, I made a personal development plan before I started just so I sort of knew what I would be working towards and to see where I would be going um, even though I might not know what vehicle I'm going to use to get there I at least know where that destination is um, so my mentor works in my company but he's maybe not the most technical person he may have some sort of uh, software development experience but that is not sort of what he pushes himself as. So I've got the sort of how to promote yourself uh, way of thinking. So something good that I think everyone should consider is having a brag book, which is having a list of things that you have done that you feel you've done really well in, put the date next to it or the time next to it. Um, it's kind of like a portfolio, but um, just so that when you have a new job or a new interview or someone asks you something, you have something to refer to. Um, and it's not like, oh, I did that thing, but like, I can't really remember what it is. Like, if you've got that document there, you can just pull it up, refer to it and talk about it, which, you know, people want to hear about what you've done and hear examples as well. Um, it's a very do it yourself world. So just be proactive and get on it. Yeah, that's really great advice. I think I might actually have to um, start doing that because it is, it's so easy to forget things that you've worked on. And also for me, sometimes it's like feeling uncomfortable about saying, oh, I did this thing, did this thing. But it's helpful to have it there, you know, staring you in the face so you can't kind of ignore it or just brush it to one side. Um, it's really great advice. Thanks for that. Um, so thinking about, um, you know, we're talking about uh, diversity in DevOps, women in DevOps. Um, Rihanna, I'd really uh, like to hear from you in terms of your thoughts on how we can make the tech industry more accessible for women. Oh, uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a big question, <laughs> obviously, but I'll try to answer based on what I noticed. <laughs> yeah, or even uh, if it's like a, a couple of key things that you think um, really would make, really make a difference. Um, well, um, while volunteering on different uh, occasions uh, for young girls and for women in general, what I notice is that um, especially young girls are uh, more uh, susceptible to influences of discouragement from their peers uh, and let's say the stigma of the tech field, <laughs> the usual stigma. Uh, in my opinion, what would help uh, what would help uh, uh, to make them, let's say, uh, take more accessible is um, trying to uh, build the network of women that can support each other uh, and help uh, each other. Um, uh, and uh, also uh, having uh, a network of, co of, um, of women that are willing to volunteer or mentor the new buys for uh, or women that want to uh, to get into tech field in general. That's what is happening right now. <laughs> so still I get back to the community thing. <laughs> and, um, uh, and a part of that, uh, 
helping also, I mean, more of helping, uh, uh, I say, uh, I mean, I, su I suggest that um, uh, reaching out, for example, to high schools uh, and uh, uh, teaching the new generation, the girls, <laughs> the new generation, that tech is really accessible and uh, th there are like different kind of uh, sectors or fields that one can uh, can work uh, uh, once you get into into tech in general and uh, support them in their uh, first moves into into tech in general so um, uh, my suggestion is more on uh, helping each other. That's really, I mean, a woman that reached to another woman to ask any kind of question, she feel more comfortable in, in, instead of doing it in, uh, in general in some, uh, in a, uh, in a um, man dominated uh, team. <laughs> so yeah, building a network where women are uh, volunteering to mentor the others and uh, support each other. I, I think I was lucky that I, I had um, the, one of the uh, communities that I used to go, uh, the leader was a woman and uh, through her, I, I found a passion to take <laughs> and also to lead a community. <laughs> uh, and uh, so that's, I mean, um, then um, to find a possibility uh, or, and uh, to facilitate uh, um, a way to come to reach out for other women that can support you and that can uh, give you uh, any suggestions and share their experiences will help in general to more to have more uh, women into into take that's that's in general my suggestion thank you so much for that um definitely would champion the importance of community um those kind of safe spaces to share ideas meet others um and get support um yeah and so we do have a question thinking about um working from home and during a pandemic um and so to Rianne particularly um we know that during this time a lot of organizations are adapting um shifting to working from home um and we know that in terms of your journey that you joined news uk during the pandemic um I just wondered what that experience was like uh, in terms of onboarding um and yeah just just a bit more about how how you went through that experience yeah um I would say it was quite strange it was probably quite strange for my employer as well because it was the first time they had ever had to even think about that and then on top of it actually deliver it um, and I think they probably had about 10 people um, all trying to get hired at the same time and have their onboarding at the same time um, I remember someone sending an email saying when can I come in for my onboarding and then it quickly changed from coming in to oh it's going to be online um, which was quite strange so I actually started on the Tuesday after the Friday when lockdown was announced so the only time I've actually seen my office is during my interview which um, I, I remember but not so much <laughs> Um, I sometimes Google it just to make sure I'm on the same page. I know where it is, London Bridge. Yeah, that's where I would get off. Um, so, yeah, it's been quite tough. I mean, I guess it's quite challenging. Um, there's a lot of different things that go on that maybe uh, you might have a lot more imposter syndrome. Um, I definitely have felt that way because I'm someone that would prefer to talk to someone in person and ask questions in person, but just being behind the screen and trying to gauge someone's character is a lot harder. Um, and sometimes it is a little bit more difficult to just say, oh, hey, could I just pull you over for a second? Could you just see what I'm doing and, and just check over it? Um, it's, it's really hard in that sort of sense. I mean, I like being home and I like that I can just wake up and just jump on and do what I need to do and stuff like that. I'm, I'm more productive, but just starting out, I feel that mm, it maybe wasn't the right thing, but there's not much that could have been done. Um, and I feel that it was handled quite smoothly. Um, but just as a person, I prefer to talk to people in person and get a, a real sense of the environment and 
I guess you get to learn about the different departments as well and what kind of context they work in and how they relate to you, which has been also quite difficult finding out. I've had to sort of go off on my own and sort of say, hey, are you free for 15 minutes tomorrow just so I can see what your department does and what your team looks like and what your projects look like. Um, and I've just sort of been doing that um, off the back of my own curiosity, just wanting to find out what is happening so I can piece things together a bit more rather than just thinking, okay, we've got this project to do and don't really know how it works, but just gonna do it anyway. Um, I like to sort of have that background knowledge and then be able to apply it. Um, so yeah, I would say working from home, just starting out has been quite challenging. Um, but I'm seven months in now, so I'm not sure when we might be going in. But yeah, I'm enjoying saving money. That's that's the good thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can uh, definitely join you on the saving money. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, thanks uh, for sharing that experience and um, just kudos to you as well for kind of having the courage to reach out to to people and initiate some of those conversations because that's that's hard to do in any sense but especially as someone newer to the company and maybe not knowing those people very well um, and kind of reaching out for that um, so yeah it's definitely a, a, a different time um, just you know stepping away from your your desk and going to the water cooler as they say and bumping into someone and starting off conversations it kind of requires a bit more from us at the moment um and so we do have another question for Sola and I think just to kind of go back a bit on when we were talking about mentors and we've talked a bit about um community as well um and thinking about how we find those mentors and role models um especially if we're working in an industry where you know there's less women present um I just wondered if you had any thoughts on a or opinions on how we kind of overcome some of those shortages of women mentors and role models in the DevOps industry. Okay, um, overcoming the shortage of women. Indeed, there is a shortage. I mean, just to emphasize that, I mean, it's, it's really hard. I remember going to a networking event some time back and, you know, it was, I think, yeah, I think it was at IBM and, you know, a group of women in tech and we have all these conversations and every time I introduce myself to people, they're like, oh, and I say, oh, I, I'm in DevOps, I'm Sola Ojo, blah, 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 I'm, I'm a DevOps engineer. They're like, oh, you're the first black um, female DevOps engineer I've ever met. And I'm like, okay, interesting, you know. So I, we do exist, obviously. We have a lot of women in DevOps and black women in DevOps. It's just that we're very few, such that you tend to stand out in, you know, in, in meetings like that. So indeed, there is a shortage. And what I would say is, you know, we need to be open, you know, to mentoring, even, um, you know, um, to male mentoring as well, you know, you don't, I mean, I know that there is an importance, you know, we, we definitely need to have female mentors, but I feel like, like what I said earlier, it's about identifying the areas you want to be mentored on, right? So as far as technical skills are concerned, you know, when I don't see um, female role models in DevOps who I can, you know, relate to on that level, I tend to leverage the male, my male colleagues, you know, as my male mentors, as far as technical skills are concerned. And then when it comes to, you know, life, work-life balance, and things like that i tend to talk to um you know senior women about issues like that you know because obviously they can relate with me on that level so i feel like that's one aspect of you know um you know managing that shortage another thing is you know just being creative about it we can also read about women in technology as well someone like um i think her name is Meg um, Whiteman or Whitman, I can't remember now, the former CEO of eBay, she has a book called The Power of Many. And, you know, just when you see those kind of women in tech, even though they might not be accessible to you, you can read their books as well, you know, and tap into their, their, their mindset, how they think about their career, how they've managed their lives, you know, and their jobs. Another woman I really um, do like is... Um, um, the former, I think she was C CIO of um, Facebook, um, who wrote this book about, um, 
Um, I can't remember the book now, but it's a popular one once I remember I'll mention it. So I do read books, you know, just to understand, you know, just to understand how females have navigated their career in, in technology, you know, so that's one way. Another thing is also extracurricular activities. This is something I really enjoy doing at work as well. And it has a way of, um, you know, um, easing off the tension at work, you know, sometimes, especially in a role like DevOps, which is super technical, like, you know, th there's that tendency to just sit down on the desk and, you know, you're just there, you know, trying to work out, you know, how Jenkins is going to work, how Git is going to function well, you know, you're trying to set all these things. For me, extracurricular activities are a lifesaver. So I do organize in my company, I organize um, quarterly breakfast events where, you know, we bring a, a top woman in technology and she speaks to women that are just coming into technology. And, you know, we have the opportunity to discuss on an informal level. I feel like when you discuss very casually about things like that. It just makes people open up a lot more. You know, we've had sessions where women will come, they tell us about their stories, about how they manage even their relationships, their better halves, their children, you know, and, and it just, it just, it just, you know, creates that platform for women to learn as well. So I feel like there's so many ways to get around the shortages. And, you know, there's that part of also, yeah, definitely sharing people's story. Of course, we've not been able to have those physical um, breakfast sessions, but now we do them online as well, you know, and then everyone puts on their video and then you see people eating breakfast. We have virtual dinners as well, where you just bring one woman that has been in the industry for like 20 years and she's there talking about her journey, you know, sharing it with women who are just coming in. We discuss issues that are very peculiar to women, things like confidence, you know, how you grow your confidence, how you do those things. So I really do enjoy those sessions. Those are ways that we can get around mentoring, even if you don't necessarily have a woman in DevOps that you can say, you know, um, you know, this is the, the, the woman that, you know, I want to look, I, I can look up to. In terms of book, I remember now, her name is um, Cheryl Sandberg, and she wrote this um, book, you know, related to women, you know, unleashing themselves and being the best self. So definitely, you can read books about women in tech, you can, you know, speak to, you can actually be mentored by men as well, you know, and then talk to women about, you know, things related to, yes, thank you, <laughs> yeah, um, things related to, you know, um, work-life balance, managing children. In fact, we've had sessions where we've had people talk about how, you know, they have their kids at home, they have to homeschool and, you know, and they're also working. We have women who are divorced and have to manage their children in addition to demanding works and work and all of that. You know, as women, these are issues that we can relate to, you know, even if we're not doing exactly the same thing at work, but these are things that are very common to women. So definitely, I would, I would say that um, those are ways that we can we can get around shortages. And of course, one more thing, sorry, before I wrap up, is to also think of yourself as a mentor as well. This is something that I actually used to, you know, you know, sometimes you feel like, oh, I just got into this company and you don't realize that you've actually spent like one year, two years, and you're actually in a position to mentor someone as well. Even if it's just one year you've been in an industry, that's enough experience for someone who is just joining. And even if you're just coming in, you have enough experience to share to someone who is in secondary school, so I think women, we need to always see ourselves as leaders, see ourselves as mentors, and we should mentor the other way around as well. So even as much as I don't, I can't, I can't really say I have so many women in DevOps to look up to as well, I'm trying to become one so I can mentor other people, you know? So I think thinking that way to also help so that we don't miss out on the opportunity to help people behind us as well. Thank you. Thank you. That was a really great answer and lots of really great advice in there. I think on that point of kind of mentoring others, um, it's kind of having the confidence in ourselves to realise, because I think sometimes we maybe don't feel like we can be mentors, but realising that we're the experts on our own experiences. And just by sharing, you know, here's where I started from, here are the things that I did that got me to where I am now. Never know how impactful that is for someone else who is at that point that you were at a year ago. Um, and then being able to see the journey you took. It might not be the journey they specifically take, but they can kind of see the steps and how you kind of went through challenges and that can help um, inspire them. We've also, I think someone, uh, the book that you mentioned, Option B by Cheryl Sandberg, um, just in case anyone wanted to know what that second book was that Sola was talking about. Um, so we've got the last few questions before we, um, we've got some great uh, questions coming in in Q&A that we're going to move to shortly. Um, so the last few questions, uh, Rihanna, um, you know, you talked initially about when you first applied for your computer science degree and um, that didn't quite work out in the way you expected. You kind of had to overcome that obstacle and kind of um, re-navigate and would just be interested to hear your thoughts on um, 
how we bridge the gap in confidence for women in technology uh, where they might have had an experience where something's not gone the way they expected or they're thinking about getting into tech and trying to get that confidence built up um, what what things can we do to bridge those gaps in confidence uh, well as um, as Sola said first of all for and also you Shoban said uh, for the for the confidence part, uh, working on the soft skills, the mentoring really helps a lot. That really helped me to 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 get confidence. I, I was a very shy person. <laughs> I never thought I could be um, doing uh, public speaking in front of people, or taking conferences, or uh, leading um, a community. So in the past two years, I think. Uh, what really helped me to gain a confidence in um, in general it was uh, one improving a bit of soft skills and uh, the other is teaching the others because uh, uh, the the even the simple information that you have it could be really uh, an important information for the other person and uh, related to this one of my uh, experience when i as i get into tech it was uh, uh, in the uh, very first class of uh, programming course that i take uh, I went. Uh, um, I, mean, I went to the to this course, and uh, I missed a really in, important information. But uh, uh, the teacher back then uh, didn't tell while doing um, a programming course in C. Didn't say uh, that we can uh, compile and check the programs in our computer, which is really a minor information for him. But for me, it was really important because it was my first time <laughs> approaching to tech in general. And um, I did, uh, I mean, he, he used to write in the whiteboard to the, um, uh, the code and I used to <laughs> write in the whiteboard and I used to go to, uh, back to home and doing the exercises in the paper <laughs> because <laughs> it was a really minor information for him, obviously, or even for my um, classmates. But for me, it was a really big information. <laughs> So uh, yeah, sharing to others is really important. And uh, uh, in order to, to have confidence, uh, not, only the, not only like um, improving your tech skills, it's really important your, uh, also improving your soft, your soft skills uh, in general. Uh, and uh, mentoring is important because uh, you realize uh, uh, little and big information that you miss out maybe when you are learning yourself. <laughs> you will find the, that uh, and you realize that when you are mentoring to others. So uh, most of my suggestions in order to gain the confidence is, uh, is related to uh, teaching to others, uh, uh, being active members, uh, uh, talking, to, uh, talking to finding persons, individuals that are interested in the same thing and talking about it. Uh, seeing the trends, how it's going and updating yourself, your technical skill and also your soft skill. So my suggestions are related to, to, this, uh, uh, to these topics in general. Great, that's really great advice, thank you. Um, so uh, Sola, a question for you um, is thinking about learning on the job. Um, so in your opinion, how can we get more flexibility to develop skills on the job whilst in the tech sector? Okay, thank you. That's an important question because I feel like my whole career was built on this. And um, the first thing I would say is people who are very, you know, technical, like line managers or generally companies should look out for potential, you know, rather than just people who can do the job. Because the truth is, I always tell myself that, you know what, when, when people um, push, a, um, give me a challenge about, oh, can you do this? Can you do that? I'll just be like, you know what, I might not be able to do it now, but give me some time. I can learn this thing, you know, and I feel like if, if, if companies are able to, I really do appreciate my company, company I currently work for because they have this mindset of recruiting graduates who are passionate about technology and you can literally become whoever you want to be in tech as long as you're willing to learn and grow your skills. So I feel like companies should not be fixated on people who can do the job alone, but they should look out for potentials. People who have a track record of, you know, um, pushing themselves beyond their limits, you know, people who can, you know, take up a challenge and overcome it. You know, these are people who are, if you see people like that who are passionate about tech, they can literally also learn the job and build the skills 
that they don't have now. So one of the things that helped me in terms of learning on the job was first, having the opportunity to actually do so. So I would say that companies should create such opportunities where, you know, you, you can hire people who would, you know, who, who can learn on the job and, you know, grow their skills along the way. And the second thing I would say is companies should also encourage that culture of learning. I feel like the future of tech the future of, you know, the world that we live in, things keep changing. I mean, COVID has shown us that, you know, there can be a completely different kind of world, you know. So I feel like, you know, as far as work is concerned, generally, the, the people who really thrive in the future are people who are committed to learning, people who can unlearn, you know, learn and relearn, you know, the things that they've known. You know, we've had people in these times, sadly, who have had to change their careers, who have had to pick up so many skills um, because sadly they, they lost their job. It, it's quite unfortunate you know but but what we see from there the, the main lesson we see from there is that we need to have the mindset of constantly learning we need to have that mindset of constantly improving ourselves so i would say that as employees in whatever field we are we should challenge ourselves to make sure that we're always on our toes you know things keep changing we, we we've moved now one of the major technologies we keep talking about in tech is cloud you know we've moved on a lot of companies are now moving to the cloud we've left data centers so you can't you can't say oh i've done this for 20 years and I just have to remain on prem you know a lot of companies have been so adamant to move to the cloud and given COVID a lot of companies have been forced you know to move to the cloud because there's no other option you can't just get stuck with data centers and on-premise environment cloud is you know the future so I mean this is not to sell cloud but it's just an example of how things in technology keep changing and how we as um, employees need to have that mindset of continuous learning. And I feel like if companies have incentives as well, because in my company, for example, sometimes you just get random emails that, oh, um, would you like to do this certification in the next one month and you get a hundred pounds Amazon voucher, you know, and you're like, okay, <laughs> I can do, I can do with a hundred pounds voucher. I mean, that's free money just to study and get certified on this. So I feel like those are the things that companies can do to make it flexible for people to learn on the job, have incentives, you know, encourage people, encourage people. Some companies can even go to the length of paying for trainings, paying for people to get trained. That's a very good thing to do. When I know that all I need to do is to just show up, apply myself, learn and grow, then it makes it a bit easier. I know oh, I'm not necessarily using my money for this, you know, it's taken care of. So I feel like, you know, those are the things that we can do as employees. We should have that mindset of learning and growing ourselves and not being stuck in a particular way of doing things, you know, especially given the world that we are right now. And I feel like companies should encourage training, give, 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 give your employees time off to go and get trained, you know, give them days off to do their certification exams, you know, give them incentives for for being certified recognize them you know and and also you know people recognizing potential and you know um, allowing people to to grow on the job that's something that's definitely helped me yeah thank you so much that's really great advice um so we are kind of we're over time for the panel i will finish up our last two questions we'll try and squeeze in a couple of questions from the live q a um just to say for the community for any questions that we don't um get to in this session we're going to be doing a write-up after this which we'll share um, so we will aim to answer those questions in that write-up. Um, so just the last couple of questions and we'll try and take a couple of live ones as well. Um, so Rianne, uh, just the last question for yourself. Um, so Women in DevOps as a community was founded to close the gender gap in, in DevOps. Um, and just speaking specifically from your personal experience, um, how have you found and, and particularly have, if you have any key tips or advice for navigating being the only woman in your department? Yeah, sure. Um, I think when I was applying, I kind of already knew that there was a, a sort of increasing curiosity for companies to have more women or more black women or more women of color. So I already knew kind of what I would be walking into and especially during my interview, just walking around and seeing the different desks and different offices and seeing who was filling these seats, I could already see that um, I potentially might be the only black woman there. Um, and in my team, I am. Um, I work with five other guys. Um, so it is quite a challenge. Um, 
it can be easier when there's more of a mixed team, whether that's uh, different races, different religions, whatever. Um, it helps to sort of make things a bit more cohesive. You've got different uh, strings that you can relate to or sort of find out about. But um, when it's sort of just you, it can be challenging because you may not be able to relate to some of the discussions going on or you may not feel comfortable to sort of voice any of your concerns. Um, but any issues that I have had or felt uncomfortable with, I have voiced it to anyone that I maybe felt maybe wasn't quite wording things in the correct way or anything like that. And although I did question it in the beginning, I thought, well, no, if I am feeling uncomfortable, then I do need to say something. Um, you can't just sort of feel that way and then expect things to change or you know, when you feel uncomfortable, things can either spiral off and you just feel worse or you can use it to sort of level up and use that as an opportunity to maybe make the way for some other people as well. Sometimes you have to be that change that you want to see. And I think that's that's what I'm trying to do, even though I haven't officially taken on that role. I mean, if there are any other women that do join, I would be happy to, you know, sort of help them out in that sort of way um yeah and going back to that mentoring thing i'll be happy to take anyone under my wing and just give them that sort of advice or nurturing that that they might be missing you know or maybe have never had from their previous employers which is important to address as well you know yeah that's really amazing um especially kind of taking from your experience and being able to support someone that then is coming after you as well it's really amazing um, so we'll do the last question. Um, so our last question that we have uh, is what are your thoughts on the future of the DevOps, the DevOps sector and diversity? And I might tag into that um, one question that we've got from the community about how you each define DevOps. Um, so I think if we go around all of you, like firstly, how you define DevOps and then what's your thoughts on the future of the DevOps sector and diversity? Um, I will go for, re yeah, let's go for a Rianne. Sure, so um, I did leave a little uh, thing on what I thought DevOps was. Um, obviously, Dev is like development, um, that kind of thing and operations is like the IT operations side of things and I guess it was brought about to sort of cohesively make those two departments work together more seamlessly um, rather than it being quite broken and quite uh, segmented like that um, but for me I think it's still quite hard to define what it is because it's not necessarily a framework or a workflow it's more of a culture I would say and a way of working that goes in hand with like agile ways of working. Um, and I just think it's something that is taking over. People want to be obviously making their lives easier. So why would they not go for working in this kind of way? Um, and so what was your other question? Your thoughts on the future of the sector and diversity? Um, I think we are going to see a lot of change. Um, it's something that people want to happen and it needs to happen. Um, and it's starting from very young ages now as well. It's happening in schools, colleges. There's a lot more promotion around technology, computer science, coding, uh, becoming a data analyst and all of these different roles that maybe 10 years ago, 15 years ago, wouldn't have been mentioned so much unless you furthered yourself to do a degree in such uh fields you know so i think it's really great i think companies will have to look at you know their biases in algorithms um the way that they advertise their their job posts the kind of languages language that they use um sometimes i've even heard from employees saying that they the language they used sort of used to attract more men than women so it's it's acknowledging that and doing something about it you can't tell me you want to have 50% female workforce and then you're doing the same things that you was doing 20 years ago. It's, it's never going to work. So I think we will see a lot of change um, as long as we keep pushing, um, we keep connecting with each other. When we do see roles, you know, tell someone about it, share it. Even if they don't go for it, at least you've, you've put it out there, you know, that you recognise their potential and that they can do it. Anything is possible. 
Thank you. I think if we go for, if we've got like a one or two sentence on the future of um, DevOps and diversity uh, from Rihanna and then Sola. Well, for me, um, I don't work actively in DevOps, <laughs> even if it's my <laughs> latest interest. Actually, I did some courses lately. <laughs> on, um, I did win a, 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 a w, an AWS uh, scholarship to do my course. I enjoyed it <laughs> a lot <laughs> doing it. So I'm new by for DevOps. I am realizing also in in the I mean the DevOps sector in um, uh, in particular, there is a, a gender gap issue <laughs> that I thought more it was on the other uh, tech uh, sectors in which I work in. I'm most, I work mostly as a full stack developer. So um, I think it's related in general in tech, uh, in tech industry and uh, we, we have to contribute to, uh, uh, to the diversity, I think. <laughs> Uh, and um, inspire the ad others. That's uh, that's in general uh, what will help uh, um, the diversity in, uh, in in tech sector. So yeah, we keep on uh, sharing our experience and uh, inspiring the others. Thank you, and Sola. Yeah, I would say, I mean, I think they've said it all already, but what I would just say is that indeed programs like this really help. It's important for young girls to know that there are women in DevOps, you know, and when we start working with that mindset that it's not just men that do these things, I think, you know, it helps to raise the awareness and that's, and because we're doing programs like this, I'm, I'm positive about the future of DevOps. In, in, in a lot of companies, we can already see there's that gap. So a lot of companies have targets on how much women they need to bring in. So I'm, I'm very positive that in the future, we would actually be able to balance that margin. So that, that's my view. I feel like um, women are actually rising in the tech industry. It, we might not be there yet, but we're on the way there. Okay, thank you so much um, from each of you um, for sharing your experiences uh, and the questions that we had. We will take a couple of questions we've got from the attendees. Um, so we've got a question saying um, if any of you have opinions on how the industry can work to combat the lack of women uh, choosing to go for tech education programs from senior edu education onwards. So uh, maybe thinking about girls uh, through school into kind of senior education. Um, are there any particular programs that can be created or that can support um, getting more women choosing to go for those programs? Or are there any programs that you know of that exist already? Uh. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> okay. What I just wanted to say, I mean, there, there's an initiative that myself and a couple of people, my colleagues started at work recently, which had to do with getting specifically, it was targeted at getting more women certified in a particular cloud certification, you know, and okay, I can mention AWS since we had already mentioned it, you know, so um, yeah, we do, I, I think um, having, because that links to what Rihanna was saying earlier about having a community, I feel like when, when we have events that we specify that, you know, this is about women, this is for women, you know, this is getting more women, particularly certified in AWS, I think it really did encourage a lot of people to, you know, consider getting the certification as well because people were able to share their stories about how they're able to balance their business schedules with getting a certification as well, even though they have other demands. So I would say that, you know, programs, again, they still boil down to that community, sharing your story and specifically targeting the people that you want to get. Let's not just generalize things, you know. I feel like when we have groups that are very specific to people, if we decide to have things like working moms getting certified in AWS, that's very specific and very niche to that group of people. You can actually get practical about about, you know, ways that you would recommend that they, that, you know, that they do this thing. So that's what I would say that we currently do in my place of work. And it, it's helped to get a lot more women certified in that, um, um, in AWS. Great, thank you. 
Um, and for um, anyone, if there's any kind of, it was directed to Rianne, but if anyone uh, has additional experience with this, um, did you, because you talked a little bit about imposter syndrome kind of in the new role, um, and also questions about whether you felt that during your boot camp, uh, and if you did, how did you deal with it? Um, definitely, uh, quite a few times, I would say. The only way that I felt I could deal with it was to maybe speak to other people that started at the same time as me to see if they had a similar feeling. Um, I could have gone to other senior members of staff, but I thought maybe just see if they were feeling the same thing, especially as they started around the same time. And it's a common theme that, you know, people have, even if they have been in their jobs for a long time, sometimes you feel you know, you're out of your depth or you question yourself, even though you do have that potential, um, you do have the skills, but sometimes you need to stop and recognize that, you know, just take a second and actually think, you know, what have I done? I did do something well, I can do this, you know? It's all in your mind. So sometimes you just have to take a step away, a moment away, or maybe speak to someone. That's what I think, um, because sometimes a problem shared is a problem halved and solved. <laughs> um, but if you don't speak about it no one will know how you're feeling so that might start to affect your work which you don't want so the best thing is to you know maybe speak to someone um, with a family or friend or somebody at work um, and then I think we'll do uh, one last question on um, We've got an interesting question here, which uh, just if any of you have thoughts on this, um, do you think that if a job advert does not contain a salary range, it could lead to salary disparity? Particularly when we're thinking like, you know, maybe negotiating or saying, you know, yeah, does it lead to that disparity? In your opinions? In my opinion, uh, for my experience actually, uh, more on the salary disparity, uh, I feel like when I go to an interview and uh, same uh, colleague of mine, a man goes to interview, we present ourselves differently. <laughs> that leads the, to a fact that maybe it looks like I'm a, I am um, uh, I mean, he's more expert or he's more required. <laughs> he has more requirements than me. So in my experience, yeah, like uh, bragging or talking about my uh, accomplishment or either uh, presenting myself, it was, uh, it was not the same as uh, this, um, a colleague of mine with same experience uh, can um, have done. So yeah, that can lead more on the disparity or being um, under-evaluated. So uh, for this, um, one of the, one, when searching for job and um, uh, preparing for the interview, it's good that you uh, give value to yourself and to the things that you, that, that you accomplish uh, in order to have, uh, to present yourself uh, as much as confident possible. So. Yeah, I think that's what I worked on based on my previous experiences because I, 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 I mean, I had more certificates, I had more uh, acknowledgements uh, and more experience, but uh, uh, I was presenting myself uh, so insecure uh, and that led to uh, being uh, evaluated uh, differently uh, from uh, um, the other person who presented itself in general in a proper way and in a confident way. Thank you. Okay, so I think we'll we'll leave the questions there. As I mentioned, um, for any questions that we haven't been able to answer, we're doing a write up afterwards. So we'll gather those. Uh, we'll get some responses and we'll share that with you. I just wanted to say a massive thank you to Rian, Rihanna, Sola for each of you sharing your experiences so openly, so frankly, um, and for all of the amazing advice um, that you shared on, on different things that you can do uh, throughout your career. Um, just to say um, that uh, Women in DevOps and Coding Black Females to our attendees to have a look out for us and follow us on social media and check out our websites. 
um, I will also hand over to Lucy to kind of do um, a little bit of a wrap up and invite everyone to go over to the networking session. Lovely. Thank you so much, Siobhan. And thank you for being such a fabulous chair. Um, thank you to our speakers um, for your great insights and for some really great book recommendations as well. <laughs> I've been taking those down. Um, thank you to Coding Black Females for partnering with us. And of course, to Ari Waller and our corporate sponsors from JFrog. Um, for your giveaway and of course thank you to you folks at home um, our wonderful audience for participating we hope you can all join our next webinar um, which will be launched um, and promoted shortly and just to round everything up today we'd just like to end with a poll um, so i'm just going to launch that now lovely um, so yes, is diversity a barrier to career progression in your role? Um, but yes, we are committed to the pursuit of ensuring diversity and inclusion, um, building a people-friendly planet, closing the employment gap and promoting equality. Together we can all support one another and make a real impact throughout the technology world, enabling diversity not only in the workplace, but throughout our communities. To find out more about Women in DevOps, please do follow our website on www.womenindevops.com or follow our social media channels. Um, but for now, stay safe, take care, and we'll see you all soon.